All right, guys. Uh, so I wanted to do a follow up on that video before I released it. This is going to be pretty short. So there was a, a few things that I overlooked. One was that during the hard pivots, if you hard pivot really hard, uh, sometimes that hand comes really close to the face. And I didn't like that. And so this was uh, my solution. Also, you'll notice that I actually uh, turned these into variables because I'm using them in multiple places and I don't want all this uh, logic uh, well, mostly the logic inside of here because we're doing that land heavy and land light stuff and the one inside of here it's somewhat I mean it's not real heavy but I don't want to I'm minimizing the amount of processing that we're doing so I'm just gonna I'm just saving these into variables right here and I actually added the uh, is pivoting hard logic to the overlay weight itself as you can see here and if they're pivoting hard I'm decreasing the I'm decreasing it to 0.5 I'm still not increasing the speed but actually I mean I guess you could increase the speed as well so over here on the overlay, the additive overlay strength, when pivoting hard, I increase that to 0.5. And when they're not, when they shouldn't be overlay aiming and they're in the idle state, I'm actually setting that to uh, 0.5 right here and 1 uh, if they are in the idle state but they shouldn't be aiming and the reason why is because the hand if you remember the hand was straight out in front right here and it wasn't looking right uh, so that's why I did that whenever whenever we shouldn't be aiming and we're running uh, which would be this right here we're setting it to 0.5 uh, so that the hand isn't too close into the body. It, it may look a little funny uh, during that state. Now we could actually do treat these as uh, curve values instead and have these curve values on the animations themselves. Even though that those are being motion matched, uh, those curve values will still come out. Uh, they will be blended together though. So... Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm not doing it uh, that way. Also, there's a lot of animations in here and going back and doing that, it would it would be a lot of animations. So anywhere I, I put the is within aim offset or AO threshold, I went ahead and uh, replaced that with the Boolean value. I did not do that on the chooser itself though. So yeah. That's how that works. So there was also something else I did here with the upper body layer. I set the clavicles to only be 75%, both clavicles. And if you look at these weights, I probably made some adjustments to these weights. I think I lowered this to 0.75 and then this to 0.6 and 0.4. And that's for the additive overlay. And the reason why is because even though it does look cool, whenever uh, his hand out in front is a little over exaggerated, it causes weight issues. Without having it set up like this, it causes, even with it set up like this, it causes some weight issues. Uh, that's mostly because of the uh, mesh. It may not do this on your character, especially if you have a metahuman with a post-processing uh, setup. And the reason why is basically because of uh, the way that this arm is being extended out in front. But 
That's the reason why I reduced the clavicles here. And on this one, I just added a blend depth of uh, three. It still has to start at the clavicle, uh, but having a blend depth uh, allows it to still be pointing straight forward, but with less of that uh, problem on the shoulder. Because before, the shoulder the shoulder was being stretched out this way uh, and now it's more being stretched out this way. But yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick update on that before I released the first part of the video.